This is The Business View, live from London. We'll be continuing our coverage of the European economy after the break when we speak to one of CEOs, one of the CEOs of the top retailers across the region. Our hold CEO will be on the show just after this. Hello and welcome back. You're watching The Business View. German consumer confidence has jumped to its highest level in more than 13 years. Low oil prices saved families plenty of money, freeing up their cash to spend on other things. Well, GFK Market Research Group says that its consumer sentiment indicator rose to 9.7 from an earlier reading of 9.3 just a month ago. And that makes it the highest reading since October 2001 for Germany. Still, added competition is subtracting profits from our holds. The Dutch retailer says that promotional activities in the United States and in its home market of the Netherlands squeezed profit margins in the last three months of 2014. Mind you, it did still see a small rise in net profit for the fourth quarter to just shy of $250 million. That's compared to $244 million a year earlier, so not a huge improvement year on year on the quarter. But our hold had been struggling with intensifying competition, especially in the United States, for some time and that's the market where it makes most of its sales. Let's take a closer look behind these numbers and also what the Eurozone is expecting and major retailers expect from consumer sentiment over there. Dick Boris, the CEO of Ahold, he joins us now live from Zandam in the Netherlands. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Mr. Boer. So, your profits, um, things, are looking, good afternoon. things are looking good considering, but the competition is quite significant. And you still decided that you wanted to buy back shares from investors. Why did you feel that you had the money to do that at this particular point? Now, first of all, of course, our, our business has, has uh, certainly improved uh, to the lot, latter part of the year. So the fourth quarter certainly gave us uh, improved sales trends on both sides of the ocean, as well in the US, as well in, in Europe. Uh, that gives us the confidence at least that uh, we are on the right track with our way of addressing the customer uh, perception on, on value and they want to have better value but also same at the same time better quality. Now why can we do it at share buyback? Uh, first of all we are generating a lot of cash uh, also last year free cash flow of more than a billion um, and we have clear rules for ourselves how to use our cash positions, partly by investing in growth and partly by returning the money when needed or where, where we are able to to our shareholders. So where will you be investing in that growth? Because as I was saying before, the bulk of your profits coming from places like the United States and your home market of the Netherlands. But the U.S. is a very competitive place for a retailer, especially a European retailer, to be these days. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. But on the other hand, we're investing in operating profit, as you said already. The margins were slightly down in the fourth quarter um, as a total. But at the same time, we're also able to, uh, to find what we call enough savings and simplicity cost savings in, in our business to reinvest that back into the hands of the customer. The investments, on the other hand, are largely going to store refurbishment and, of course, the smaller acquisitions where possible, as we did last year with the Interspar acquisition in, in Czech Republic. The third area where we invest, and that's more in operating profit than so much in capital, is on our online proposition. We are the largest food online retailer in the US. We are the largest online retailer in food and non-food in the Netherlands and Belgium. So we really are investing in the virtual uh, selling point of, our, of course, as retailer. Um, and that's also where we set last year a, a big target for the years to come in 2017. Mm. We'd like to do two and a half billion sales in online already. If I, if I may, Dick, well, let me move away from your company's specific earnings to get the, pay, the, the pulse of the situation across the Eurozone. We've got quantitative easing that the ECB is about to embark upon, negative yields for German bonds. People are paying an awful lot of money to put the kind of cash that you're talking about, big companies at the ECB. Where do you view the Eurozone these days? Because there's good news coming out of Germany, good news coming out of Spain, but people are still very nervous about the viability of the Eurozone, highlighted by what we've seen with Greece this week. Yeah, for, uh, for, for sure, of course, in Europe, we've seen with the quantitative easing that uh, uh, the interest rates went down. Uh, but also, I personally believe that with the consumer confidence going up, uh, the customers, at least in Europe, start feeling a bit more positive about the Eurozone than before. And you've seen it last week with the whole story about Greece. At the end of the day, it didn't have that much impact. I think uh, customers and the economy is now supported by the low interest rates, of course, uh, uh, supported also 
uh, to get more employment hopefully back into the market. And we are in Northern Europe mainly, Czech Republic and, 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 and the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, and we surely hope, of course, that that will help us, our own economy, to grow again. The second, of course, advantage for us as a company where 60% of our sales come from the U.S., um, which is dollar related, that of course has an impact on our sales growth for the year, for this year at this moment, because the dollar, of course, has become quite, quite a lot down to the euro. So also that's, of course, supporting for, uh, for ourselves in this case. Obviously, as I was saying before, as a retailer out there, it's really difficult to get those profit margins right. We've seen companies like Tesco here in the UK suffer hugely for all sorts of regions and that profit margin shrinking. How can you protect your profit margins at a time like this when deflation is the biggest worry across some of these markets in which you operate, like the Eurozone? Yeah, that's correct. We have been in the Netherlands in a quite a difficult period, period over the last two years. We've seen clearly in the fourth quarter improvements. Deflation, or at least very low inflation, is clearly something which doesn't help us as retailers. So what we call our simplicity savings programs should help us to find ways to offset the cost increases or at least to find ways to grow our business. At the end of the day, for a retailer, the most important thing is sales growth. Um, so more volume through our stores. We have done a, a, a big effort in the U.S. on a plan to reposition our stores, which we are quite successful in, and growing volume again in the fourth quarter gives us at least signs of confidence that we can move forward with this in the same way for 2015. Dick Boer, the CEO of Ahold, thank you very much for coming on the show today. This is the Business View live from London. The German drug maker Bayer gives a healthy update.